So my name is Mikko Hyppänen. I'm the Chief Research Officer at F-Secure Corporation. And we'll be talking the next hour and a 15 minutes on the topic of cell phones and mobile devices, a little bit about PDAs, a little bit about uh, what's been happening on the malware front so far, where we are today, and uh, where we think we will be in the future. So if you look at the big picture, we have around uh, a little over 6 billion people on this planet right now, and uh, a little bit over 2 billion mobile phones. 6 billion people, 2 billion for mobile phones, and the number is rising pretty fast. We are uh, soon going to reach 3 billion phones on this planet, but uh, we will never reach 4 billion active phones. And I claim, or base that claim on the fact that uh, according to uh, information I, I've received is that this planet, roughly 4 billion people on this planet use a toothbrush. So if you're not using a toothbrush, you're probably not going to use a phone either. <laughs> now out of those 2 billion phones that we have, vast majority of them are uh, old school, simple, non-smart phones, which means they are pretty much immune to the kinds of risks we're talking about today. We're talking about smartphones, phones where you can install software on, software that uh, has functionality enough to be able to be used for good and for bad. We are mostly going to talk about smartphones running operating systems which are uh, publicly accessible and extendable by the users where there are publicly accessible SDKs available and things like that. Operating systems like Windows Mobile, like Symbian, Linux, and others. Of course, there are closed smartphones in the market as well. Some of the Blackberries could be considered those. Um, iPhone probably is the prime example of a closed uh, smartphone, which is in the marketplace right now. But um, as we'll be seeing, there are quite big differences based on the operating systems of the smartphones, uh, on how big problems there are, and there are quite a big difference geographically on where the problems are. Let me start by showing a couple of photos from our labs. As the chief research officer, I'm in charge of our lab operations, which we do in multiple different locations. F-Secure has offices in 15 countries right now with around, what do we have, 550 people working for us. These are photos from our uh, lab in Helsinki, where we are analyzing malware on all the platforms that we support, which of course means Windows and Linux and surprisingly mobile phones. Our headquarters in Helsinki, which is where I spent most of my time, are like two miles away from the headquarters of Nokia, which of course partly explains why we've been fairly interested in uh, mobile phone risks and mobile phone viruses and mobile phone malware in general. But that's by no means the main area of where we are actually making most of our money from. f is in the business of selling security solutions, and of course most of those go to the Windows users. Now, we do have the, uh, quite a bit of staff working for us who are focusing on mobile issues and spend their time doing nothing except that. And when you work with mobile viruses, things are a little bit different than they are on the Windows platform. This thing I'm running here in the background is an example of the technology we've developed. This is a system that can take static code and just turn it into a visual 3D representation. In this case, it's a, a file which is infected by a bagel virus. But when you start to work with mobile malware, it's a bit different in many ways. Um, I suppose the most important difference is that when you're working with Windows malware, you can do the analysis on normal computers or use virtual machines and whatever. You can just take an old computer and infect it and, and see what it does. But when you take mobile phone viruses, it's not that simple. Um, main difference is the fact that these mobile devices and mobile replication typically works by using wireless connections, connections like Bluetooth or multimedia messages or uh, potentially things like SMS messages or uh, mobile email and so on. And of course, those are radio connections, and radio connections go through the walls, which means when you want to work with mobile viruses, you have to have a, uh, a secure area. So we have two of these uh, 
shield lead rooms or RF labs that we've built with copper aluminum lining on the walls and when you close the door the room is shielded up to 35 gilo gigahertz so it will shield well Bluetooth, Zigbee, Wi-Fi, GSM, uh, 3G, what have you. And logic is that as long as the door is closed no one else is allowed to open the door so the viruses don't leak out and escape sort of like biological viruses but that's it, really the way we are doing it. We have two of these labs. Right now we're using them probably two, three times a week for real use. So that's the rate of incoming samples that we are seeing in our systems. Now if we look at, uh, talk about incoming samples, let me just quickly show you a gl glimpse of, of how we're actually working uh, with samples and, and sample stuff in our labs. This is uh, our main sample re repository where we store all the virus samples that arrive to our systems. And right now we have very close to five billion, uh, sorry, five million files in this system. Out of those, as you can see from the figure right here, 2,401 are mobile samples. Now, there's duplicates in there, there's clean files in there, but if we go back, we have 5 million files in our repository and only 2,400 of them, of them are mobile related in any way. It just shows that it's a very small part of the full uh, picture of the mobile related stuff. But that's of course good news and that's the way we'd like to keep it and if we uh, play our cards right that's the way it will stay. Now whenever I uh, speak about mobile viruses and mobile trojans and mobile spying tools to people, depends on where in the world uh, the uh, people are, uh, but I, I regularly get suspicion about the whole question or um, surprised looks that you know are you really serious? Uh, do they really exist? Aren't those just an urban legend? Or that, okay, maybe they do exist, but surely they are not spreading really anywhere, and nobody really gets them, or even if they do, they are doing it on purpose. This can't really be happening out there. But, in fact, it is happening out there. Um, well, I think a good example is that uh, in my own personal phone, I'm keeping Bluetooth open and visible to everybody. I've been keeping for a number of years. Of course, I'm running an antivirus on my phone, so I can, I'll, I'll dare to do it. And during uh, the last two years, I've received four times a Bluetooth virus infection attempt to my phone. Once in London, once in Stockholm, twice in Helsinki. Of course, I've never got inf the infection, but somebody's tried to infect me. And of course, the people who have tried to infect me didn't know that they tried to infect me. They had no idea that their own phone was infected to begin with. But yes, they are going around in the real world. And there's around 370 of them at the moment. There have already been, we claim, tens of thousands of infected devices worldwide. We have confirmed reports of infections caused by worms like Kabir and Comvorier from 30 different countries at least. Um, we work closely with several, we work closely with multiple mobile phone manufacturers. We work closely with players like Symbian and Microsoft. Uh, regarding these mobile platform operating systems. And we work closely with mobile phone operators. We get statistics, real stuff from the operator networks about how much malicious traffic they are seeing. Now, of course, they only see part of this traffic. For example, Bluetooth traffic never goes through the operators, so they never, never see any, any of that. But then again, multimedia messages or MMS messages do. And for example, one operator with 9 million customers estimated that close to 5% of all of their MMS traffic is caused not by people, but by viruses. And of course, the vast majority of MMS messages, when they are being used by normal people for normal purposes, is people snap photos with their camera, phones, and send the photo to someone else via MMS. But a surprisingly large amount of that traffic is already caused by malware. One operator with 14 million customers shared us figures that uh, they had seen over 8,000 infected devices in their network, which had sent close to half a million MMS messages. One of the phones had sent 3,500 messages. And you can, of course, start to do the math. Depends on where you are in the world and how much a single message costs you, but this could be thousands of dollars. Now, for any platform, for something like this to start happening, you have to have the basic 
prerequisite is. You have to have enough functionality on the devices itself. They have to be programmable. You have to have enough connectivity for something to start to spread. And then you have to have enough of the devices themselves. So it becomes an interesting target for someone to start to do this for real. And well, again, if you go back to the iPhone example, the iPhone target is very small. We have only a few hundred thousand of those actually out there, which is nothing. But look at the hype and look at the interest. Uh, so it's not just about the amount of machines, but there are other, other factors in play too. Now I said in the beginning that there's quite important differences on where in the world we are and what do these problems look like. And this is largely coming from the quite big differences on what kind of smartphones are the market leaders in which parts of the world. Here in the United States, everybody carries a BlackBerry. If not, they carry a Windows mobile device or then an old school phone, which is not a smartphone at all. You go to Europe, everybody has a Symbian-based smartphone. You go to most parts of Asia, same thing. Then you go to Japan, and uh, most of these iPhones, uh, so, sorry, iMode devices that they are using, well, they used to be ba based on Linux, but uh, now, nowadays, majority of those are Symbian-based as well. So let's look at some of the... Um, uh, statistics on this. I'm showing a couple of slides from the mobile analyst company Canalys with permission to show them. And the numbers are quite interesting. This is the global uh, markets. How many devices different operating, different mobile uh, manufacturers shipped in quarter one, 2007. Largest by far, Nokia. Number two, research in motion. Number three, Sharp. Motorola, PA. So this is the global market with uh, 16, sorry, 23 million smartphones being sold during those months in the beginning of the year. And as you can see, Nokia shipped 12 million of those. Then let's look at the regional differences. This is smartphone market in Americas. That's USA, Canada, and South America. RIM leader by far. Palm number two, and of course most of Palm's devices by now are shipping Windows Mobile as the operating system. Then Samsung, again with Windows Mobile based devices. Then number four, Nokia. Far behind the other players. RIM's um, shipments close to 1.6 million smartphones. Same statistics for Europe, Middle East and Asia for the same time period. Totally different. Nokia, number one, others almost insignificant. And compare the numbers. Number, amount of smartphones being shipped in Europe in Q1 2007, just Nokia alone, close to 7 million smartphones. Let's go back to USA. RIM shipped 1.6 million. So there's quite a big difference on what kind of smartphones are being shipped out and the actual amount of smartphones being shipped out. So multiple times more smartphones are being sold in Europe, for example. Don't have the statistics for uh, Asia here at on me, but uh, similar. And if you look at the total platform coverage right now, we'll see that uh, uh, Symbian-based devices, Series 60, Symbian UIQ, and other Symbian-based uh, devices are the vast majority of the actual smartphones out there today. So why am I speaking about this? Well, this is important because when we look at the actual malware, they are almost all targeting Symbian. They are not targeting Blackberries, they are not targeting Windows Mobile, they are not targeting pretty much anything else except Symbian. And that's of course based on the same fact that the markets are ruled by this operating system. So what is Symbian? 